And now for my discussion with Dr. Konstantina Stankovic. Dr. Konstantina Stankovic, welcome. Thank you. Most of us don't think about our hearing often enough, mm -hmm. except now everyone is using headphones or listening to things very loud, or most people are living in quite loud environments. I was in New York last week. I've been in Chicago, San Francisco. These are really loud cities. And even if one goes out into the countryside, you know, if you're listening to music loudly, which can be fun, feels good if you like loud music, classical or rock and roll or otherwise, I have a feeling you're going to tell us that it's not good for our hearing and that losing our hearing is not good for a bunch of other things. Tell us about hearing loss. How do we avoid it? Absolutely. So hearing loss is a huge problem. It currently affects one and a half billion people and disables half a billion of them. And the World Health Organization estimates that another billion will be affected by 2050. So this is an enormous issue, and it's really underappreciated and stigmatized, and lots of people live in silence. For example, for those who have problems with their vision, they wear glasses, and glasses can restore their vision back to normal, to the point that people now wear glasses even if they don't need them. It's a, fa it's a fashion statement. However, that's not the case for hearing loss. And it's because hearing aids are aids, like the name says, they don't restore hearing back to normal. So to answer your question, I think we really should review how hearing works. So the way we hear is when sound comes and travels down the ear canal, it vibrates the eardrum. The fancy term for it is the tympanic membrane. That sets in motion the smallest bones in the body. They are called the malleus, incus, and stapes, which is Latin for the hammer, the anvil, and the stir bone. As they vibrate, they set in motion fluids in the inner ear. And this is where these incredibly delicate sensory cells reside. They are called hair cells, but that has nothing to do with this hair. And as they deflect their sensors on top of their surface, which are called stereocilia, that leads to flow of ionic current and release of neurotransmitter and excitation of the auditory nerve, which then sends signals all the way to the brain. So in the inner ear occurs this, it's called mechanoelectrical transduction, because we are converting a mechanical stimulus into an electrical one. And there are two broad categories of hearing loss. 